Hi everyone, so today we're going to be making um, this card which is called a frilled hexagonal tower card. So it's basically very similar in some ways to the hexagonal pop-up balcony card that we made a few weeks back, or weeks so back. Um, and also it kind of is a bit pinwheelish, but it's it's not, it's it's not the same thing. But um, yeah, I quite like it. Um, I deliberately did it so that we've got double-sided um pattern card so the papers that i used for this one were trimcraft first edition and it's this pad mulberry kisses it's from many years ago i don't even know if you can still get this pad um but it's from this one so i just um fussy cut out some of these butterflies on this paper um, and then we just used this one because it's double-sided it's got that yellow on one that lemon on one side and the pink on the other um it's just really pretty it's a really pretty um and then I used the glittered, where was it, this one here, the glittered paper. Um, so yeah, if I can find it online, I will link it in the description below. I'll definitely write it down in the description anyway. There might not be a link to the product, so I don't know if you can still get it. But it's a, it's a lovely pad anyway. So yeah, so that's what we did. It folds flat to fit in an envelope. Um, so basically you just bring those two in like that. Um, and then it all folds down, oh, like this. All folds flat like that. And it fits in an envelope for a six by six card. Mine is slightly wider, just literally by like maybe a quarter of an inch. So uh, I would have to make a slightly bigger envelope for mine. But um, yeah, but it's a nice little card. I like it a lot. I like the fact it's just very pretty. So yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so for this card, you are going to need um, a base card which is six inches by 11 inches. Now I've gone ahead and used a double-sided piece, but you don't have to. You could use um, a single-sided piece or just a plain piece of colored, whatever you want to do. But I've used, um, I use this because I thought it might be quite nice to have that on the inside. So you've got a little flash of color on the inside that you see. You also need five of these, and these are two and three quarter by six inches. Again, you can choose to go for a different color, you could do what I've done and gone for a double-sided pattern paper. Um, yeah, whatever you want to do, really. It really does, you know, it's really up to you how you want to do it. So you need five of those. You're also going to need five of these one inch by five and three quarter pattern paper strips. These are single-sided because these are going to go down the middle here. Okay, so again, whatever you choose for that um and that is basically it so we're going to score so if we bring in our scoreboard so we're going to score on the main base card along the long edge we're going to score at one and three quarters three and a half five and a quarter seven inches eight and three quarters and ten and a half so it's exactly the same score lines that we did on the hexagonal pop-up balcony card because the base is exactly the same. So we can put that to one side and then you're going to bring in your five um, pieces that were two and three quarter by six. And you're going to put them in so that they are portrait and you're just going to score along the short edge at three quarters of an inch and at two inches. Okay, so you can do that on all of your pieces. Now I've gone ahead and done mine already because I figured you didn't need to watch me scoring okay so go back to your base again you can do the, it's literally the same as what we did for the hexagonal pop-up balcony card so you're going to go ahead now and um burnish and fold fold and burnish all your lines okay so once you fold and burnish all your score lines you're going to go ahead and stick red tape on the outside of your little half inch tab and then once we've done that we're then going to notch out the corners you don't have to notch out the corners if you don't want to I do just because I don't have to worry about you know one side being too big or whatever so I'm just going to notch them out now so notch that out there and notch that out there like that okay so now what we need to do is turn it over Fold the flap over that's got the tab attached, bring the other ones over and stick it down 
to make your hexagonal tower base. Okay, so you should end up with that. Now, I am going to put my tab at the front because when it's sat on my desk like that, I don't want to be able to look here and see the tab. So if the tab's there, it you know, it's fine. There's going to be so much going on the front that I don't think you're going to really worry about the fact you've got that cut edge there. It's really up to you, but I'm going to do mine like that. So I'm going to put that aside to one side for now. And then we're going to bring in our uh, other pieces. So you need to find a border punch or a border die. Or if you haven't got a border punch or a border die, you can maybe use scallop scissors. Um, if you haven't got that, you could maybe stick some little shapes down the side. You just basically want to come up with something a bit like this. So this is, you can see here, I've actually gone ahead and I've punched all of my um edges okay so i'm going to show you now how to do it i know if you know how to do use border border punches or border dies you can just skip skip through to the next bit um but i do get a lot of questions about people who buy punches and then they just can't fathom them out and they, i have to say it did take me a while to work work out how to use them so this is the way that i do it okay this is a martha stewart one that i was given i hope it's still available but i'm not sure it might be I don't know if it is. I'll have a look and see. If it is, I'll put a link in the description below so you can um, click on it and it takes you through to if you want to buy one. So basically, um, you're going to need to put your punch, your piece of paper in. So you put it in here. You've got a little slot there. And what I do is I line the top up with the top of the pattern. So you see how here you've got these little, you know, if you can see that you've got little indents there. They've got little indents there and you've got like an end of the pattern. So I put this in and line it up with the top of the pattern and make sure it's butted up against the edge. There's like an edge here. You can probably hear it. So you want to butt it up against the edge, hold it in place, and then very firmly with the palm of your hand, press down and punch. Okay. So now you can either go up or down. I'm going to go down for the starters. So you see here where you've got the edge of the pattern. You can see you've got this and then you've got the edge of the pattern. That there needs to line up with this pattern here so can you see you've got in silver you've got the pattern there so you line that up so that that little silver circle you can see nicely lined up in there and you also want to make sure this edge here is butted up you can feel it against the edge there so you put that in i'm going to punch it okay so now i've got a nice continual pattern so now this is the tricky bit and it's always used to baffle me i used to be counting them but I discovered if you just lay this, so wherever the bottom of the pattern is, which is here, if you lay that and line it up with the bottom of this pattern here, I now know that this little one here is the top of the repeat. So I'm now going to bring this over here and line that up with the top of the repeat on this one, making sure this is still butted up at the bottom. And I'm going to punch. And then you've got a nicely lined up again. So we're going to do the same thing again. So this is the bottom of the pattern, line it up with the bottom of the pattern, find the top of the pattern, which is there, bring this over, the top of the pattern lines up with the top of the pattern on the punch, make sure that what's inside is butted up, it's not sticking out like this, it's lined up, and punch. And there you have a nicely punched edge. So we're going to go ahead and do the same here. So line it up at the top and punch. I'm going to go down first line it up at the bottom and punch lay it on the top find the top which is that one there bring that in it's that one there like that and punch and then bring this one on top again find the top again which is there line it up and ooh, punch and there you have a lovely punched pattern okay so that's how you do it it's that easy okay so now we're going to go ahead and do is stick all of our pattern pieces into the middle of our little punched strips okay so i'm just going to go ahead so in between these two score lines making sure you have a nice even border left and right and top and bottom i'm going to go ahead and stick that down like that
So once you've stuck all your pattern strips down, you can go ahead and fold along your score lines. Now, I've done it so that, obviously this is the right way up, and that's going to be the other way. So you want to fold your, um, your frilly bits inwards like that. Okay, so that's the way that it's going to go on. Okay, so you want to fold each piece up so it looks like that. Okay, so once you've folded them all, they should all look like that. So now if you bring in your card base, and I've folded it so this is the front, that's going to be the back. Um, and we're going to start with the middle, and we're going to start sticking these on so that they are um, dead centre in the middle of our panel. Now top and bottom, you shouldn't have a border. Left and right, you should. Okay, um, and hopefully you'll be able to see all the frilly bits Um out the sides and also from the the ones you know next door to them okay so i've done the front so as you see when you stand it up and pop it into place can you see how you can actually then see because when you first start to stick it down it looks quite plain because the colour I've got here is the same colour as I've got here, but actually because the frill is a different colour on the other side, you can see the, the edge of that, so you just get that little catch of lemon, which is quite nice. So that's one side done. So when we're sure that's dry, we can turn it over, and if you just fold these like flat, so you'll have to work out who's going to you know, give way to who, but I usually fold it kind of like that. And you should find as well that your your edges the whole thing is not oh it's just like mine's just slightly over six mine's just slightly over six inches but um, depending on what you choose as your punch you might find that it ends up being a six by six okay so we're going to turn it over and what we're going to do on this one is we're just literally going to put one here and one here and we're going to leave that middle bit free and that'll be where you can write if you want to you can do what we did on the hexagonal balcony pop-up balcony card and do that little um, weird bit that you know make, means you've got more to write. So you can do that if you want to. I decided not to on this one. I thought I'd just leave it blank. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this down now. Okay, so then when you pop it open, that's what you end up with. And obviously the front needs a bit of a fluff because it's been flattened. But that's what you end up with. So it's quite pretty. I like the way it looks. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that pinwheel card. Um, and I also like the fact that I've, I chose to do the double-sided card. So I've got a flick of lemon there and then the same lemon pattern just on the return of all those little frills. Um, so yeah, it's just very pretty. So now I'm just going to go ahead and decorate. And to be honest, it doesn't need a lot of decorating. I'm literally going to put a couple of butterflies and a sentiment on it. And then I think that's pretty much done, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, it's quite nice. Obviously folds flat for posting. So I'm going to go ahead now and decorate the rest of it. Just add a few butterflies and I'll come back to you when I've finished. Okay, so I went ahead and added some butterflies and a sentiment. So I managed to get a um, one of these downward sentiments, which is really good. Because that's uh, sort of what you need for this kind of card. Uh, if you had a small, like a small round one, you could probably do it, or I don't know, be imaginative. Maybe a butterfly with the half birthday on it. Um, and then I've just gone round and just stuck some um, butterflies round, and obviously that's the panel for writing on. Uh, and then round here like this, and that's your um, card done. And as I said, it folds flat for posting. So to fold it flat. You just, I'm going to fold these flaps down and this flap back like that. And then I've made sure that when I've done my butterfly wings, I've overlapped the frill that will fold flat, if you see what I mean. Uh, apart from here, I haven't, that one there I haven't, but I can move him in a minute. But yeah, so anyway, it folds, it folds down flat, so that would go down that way. I haven't actually, so that folds like that. This would do the same, I just need to move this little butterfly over slightly. There we go, let's do like that. 
So there you go. And then it folds down flat and it would fit in an envelope for a 6x6 six six card. Now this one's slightly wider because of my frill. So just watch that. If you want it to be um, exactly 6x6 six six, and just make sure your left and your right, you cut, you maybe trim a little bit off the edge so that you can uh, fit it in. But yeah, I hope you liked it. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. The way we're going at the moment, we're definitely going to be hitting 10k by August, which is wonderful. I'm going to be over the moon if that happens. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so I hope you liked it and we will see you next time. Bye.